Hello, friends. My name is Alex Karekis, and I want to welcome you to the television series called The Mysteries of Monterey. Now, this show is produced for AMP2, which is Monterey's public access television station. The purpose of this show is to visit ancient sites that time has long forgotten here in Monterey, California, and elsewhere. Oh, hold it. <laughs> I hear something ringing. I'll tell you. Oh, my goodness. I better take this call, okay? Hello? Hello? Yes, 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 Mr. President. Oh, well, thank you. So you did like that last show we produced. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay, well, I'll, no, I'll keep up. I'll keep up the good work. But listen, listen, I'm busy right now. Can I call you back later? Okay, great, great. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll talk later, okay? Well, I'll tell you, I hate for those things to go off in the middle of a TV show or in a movie theater. Well, as I said, today is going to be a fantastic journey because we're going to travel to an area called Rockland, California. It's a city or an area located east of Sacramento and somewhere in between Sacramento and the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains. We're going to visit the home of the Nissan people, sometimes referred as the Southern Maidu. Now, if you look at a topographic map of this area, you'll see that there's a lot of drainages, in other words, streams and rivers and creeks flowing from the Sierra foothills into the lowlands below. And it's in these areas that we're going to find signs of ancient life. So I know today is going to be a lot of fun. So let's go gather some knowledge and enjoy ourselves during the process. Before us we have a boulder. We're in Maidu territory and this boulder is known as the Bear Rock Boulder. Now this has ceremonial significance. Let me show you something over here. As we approach the boulder we can see an incision in a boulder. This is man-made. This was made by the natives. What does it mean? Well let's continue further. Well look at this. Right here at the base of the boulder we have these grinding mortars. This was used for food preparation. But as we come around this boulder, I want to show you these marks that give it the name of the bare rock. Look at here. Look at these grooves, these slash marks. These are man-made over here. There's a series of them and they appear to be a representational form of a bear, a bear clawing a tree. Look at here at the bottom. This bowl over here was used to place ceremonial offerings to the bear rock, the guardian to the spirit world. This is known as the scratch and groove style petroglyph and at this ceremonial rock the Nissan uh, placed these petroglyphs here, these grooves and scratches on this ceremonial rock and would place offerings at its base in reverence to uh, the bear or bear clan. Before us, we have an ancient Maidu Indian site. But the fantastic thing about these boulders right here before us 
is that they contain petroglyphs that are estimated to be from five to 10,000 years old and were placed here by individuals who preceded the Maidu Indians. Now this is really fantastic. Take a look at this boulder right over here. You can see these grooves over here. This is a petroglyph. Can you see that? They're barely discernible, but they're here, my friends. This is an ancient petroglyph, and as I said, it's from five to 10,000 years old. Look at this right here. Here's a groove. Let me follow it right down to here. It comes back up over here. Look at that. And right below it here is another groove. It goes down right here and then back up again. And right over here, there's another groove and another one, like a fan shell. This is beautiful, my friends. As I said, this petroglyph predates the arrival of the Maidu who were known to live here after this petroglyph was placed here. Right here, we're standing upon what's called a midden site. This is where the refuse of the village was thrown. Let's take a look at this midden site. Look at this right over here. This is a gopher or some kind of animal that lives underground. And a fantastic thing about these animals is look, they take items that are underground and throw them out. And so sometimes they'll burrow out items from the shell midden site. Look at this, my friends. Look at this right here. Do you see it? This, <laughs> I can see it. Let me go in closer. All right, watch my finger. Okay, see this right here? This is an anomaly. Let's take a look at it. Oh my goodness. Holy Moses. Take a look at this, friends. Look at this right here. This is an ancient shell bead. Maybe it's made out of bone, but friends, this here, this came from a bracelet or a necklace made by an ancient that lived here at one time. How old this bead is, I don't know. It could be hundreds or thousands of years old. But this bead came right here from the midden site that was brought out by a gopher or an animal similar to the gopher. I'll tell you what, this is exciting. Friends, one of the things that I want to mention about our treks and our journeys is that we don't excavate. And for those items that we find on a surface, we generally leave them at that very spot or bury them. Now the next trek that we're going to take from here is to a place called the Secret Ravine. And what's exciting about this journey is that I was in a museum in Rockland when I saw a photograph of bedrock mortars, but there was no further description. And so I asked the curator, where was that photograph taken? Now that photograph was over 40 or 50 years old, but she said it was located in a place called the Secret Ravine. 
Well, friends, after receiving that scant information from the museum curator, we went to the location and spoke to several local residents. Eventually, we found the spot where that photograph was taken. But the fantastic thing is nearby, we uncovered the remains of an ancient Nissan village along the secret ravine drainage. I'll tell you, this was really exciting. We're in an area called Monument Park in the city of Rockland. It's in a residential area and you can see directly to our front several homes. Now the interesting thing about this park is that it's the home of a monument shaped as a pyramid. It was a monument built by a fellow called Mr. Whitney who owned a 20,000 acre ranch which composed most of West Rockland. So our quest today is to find this pyramid mausoleum. But this site seems to be also an ancient Maidu site. I see a place over here in front of us, a drainage where the creek used to run. This is always a sign that life may have existed here at one time. Now the interesting thing about this pyramid monument is that we don't have an exact date of when it was built by Mr. Whitney. It's believed it could have been in the 1890s time frame, or perhaps 1903 or 1904. Well, anyways, one of the things that we're going to do is search this area for this monument. Well, friends, I believe I see the pyramid. Now, this pyramid was built by a fellow called Joel Whitney. Originally, the stone enclosure, which he called the fort, was built in the late 1800s. And later on, he built a pyramid, which eventually became his tomb. Right over here is a plaque commemorating the pyramid. Now, the fort, as I said, was built in the late 1800s. And it is believed that the pyramid was built sometime in the early 1900s. Well, this is it. This is the pyramid that Mr. Whitney built for himself. Now the entrance to this mausoleum, this pyramid, is very interesting because it was cut through this boulder right over here to our left and right. And you can see over here the cut marks. Now the original enclosure, which he called the fort, it is believed he built it for his children. But I tell you, this is really fascinating when you take a look at this. As I said, this is probably built here in the early 1900s. So this is a historic site, along with being, I would say, a prehistoric site, because this area was visited, lived in, by the Maidu Indians. Well, friends, let's continue our walk around this enclosure. Let's climb up on a wall over here, on this large boulder over here, so that we can take a panoramic view of the pyramid. Oh my goodness, look at this, my friends. Over here is an ancient mortar. And here's another mortar. Let's take a further look. And oh my goodness, friends, this is the first time I've been here. Look at this. Joel Whitney built the fort. He built his tomb on ancient Maidu 
land. This is really fantastic. Let's take another look at it from here. Isn't that beautiful? Let's take a look again on these mortars. Here's one over here and here's one over here. This is interesting. These appear to be at waist level. Right over here, my goodness, look. There's one over here and there's one over here. But, oh my goodness, hold on. Let's take a look. Okay, look at this, my friends. Okay, I have no idea, but this is lying here. Look at this, okay. Let's take it out. It looks just like a regular stone. Let's see if it's an ancient implement. As I said, many of these items are actually ergonomic. Let's take a look. Okay, let me put it in my hand. Look at this. I tell you, it's a perfect fit. Okay, look, here's my thumb right here. There's a little depression for the thumb. Right here is the forefinger. And look at this, right over here. Okay, let me play with this. Okay, here it is, here it is. These two fingers, there's a depression right over here. There's a depression right over here. And also right here, look, you can actually see the depression. This, my friends, is a grinding stone. This is how it was held, and this is how it was used. This was used to grind corn. I tell you, this is, <laughs> it's hard to believe that you can still find the implements that the ancients used hundreds and thousands of years ago laying about these areas. Now, one of the reasons that these ancient mortars are here is because right over here, right over here is a creek. Water was a necessity to process the acorn as a food staple. So this here was an ancient village site. My goodness, this is really wonderful. Uh, the carcass of a red-shouldered hawk. You can see it's a raptor by the huge talons and then the red breast lets me know that classic uh, red-shouldered hawk plumage as well as the black and white tail feathers and black and white uh, wing feathers. So uh, I don't know what killed him. Probably uh, either a territorial uh, display and they had to work it out with another uh, uh, red-shouldered hawk or it could have been a, a larger raptor that uh, that killed him. Before us we have what's called Clover Valley and directly to our front we have what's called a drainage. In other words, it's a water source. Now water was an essence of life and this area was once the habitat of the Maidu Indians. So we're going to venture forth to see if we can find any signs of life. Oh my goodness, look at this right here directly in front of us. Look at this. This is an ancient mortar. This is a place where the Maidu once prepared their food. This is beautiful, my friends. Look at this right over here. So let's examine this area. Let's examine the bedrocks in this area to see if we can find any more signs of life. Okay, right here in front of us. Now this is the first time I've been here. So let's take a close look. Oh my goodness, I see it right there before us. Here is another mortar right over here. Here's my walking stick right there. And look at this, here is another mortar area right here. Right there is another one. And of course, right here, right here. Look at this, my friends. This whole stonework area is a place where the ancients hundreds of years ago, if not thousands of years ago, they prepared their food. Look at this right here. Here's another beautiful mortar right over here. So let's continue examining this area. Let's go forward towards the drainage area and see if we can find any more signs of life. Oh my goodness, look at this here in front of us. These are the remains of some type of animal. I'm not sure what type, but look, it looks definitely somewhat canine in nature. 
So we'll ask Doc Hill what this actually means. Oh, we've got the uh, skull of uh, Canis latrans, a coyote. And if you look down here, you can see the lower mandibles with the huge canines and the upper part of the skull as well. Friends, we're walking towards a stream. I can hear it. And this is why the ancients once lived here. As I always say in these type of situations, water was a source of life. Oh my goodness. The reason I hear water flowing is that I see a small dam, which I believe has been built by a beaver. Let's take a close look at it. Oh my goodness, there it is. There's a small beaver dam right here. Let's go take a quick look. All right, okay, we're coming closer. Would you look at this, my friends? Well, right over here appears to be an assemblage of sticks, probably placed here by a beaver. Well, friends, this is really wonderful. We came here looking for signs of ancient life, and we find that a beaver has made his home here. Now, let me show you something very interesting. You ask yourself, are you sure this is a beaver home? But take a look at this right over here. You see this tree over here? It's been felled. These right over here, if you can look at these small notches here, these are the tooth marks of a beaver gnawing at this tree, at this branch right here. Look at that right here. These are the two front teeth right here. This is really fantastic, my friends. Well, friends, I've crossed the stream, and I'll tell you what, this valley really is wonderful. I could see why the ancients once lived here. There's the one ridge of the valley right here, directly in front of us. And of course, the stream is behind us. And you see this high ground over here? My thinking is that probably right here at this high ground near the stream, there's probably signs of ancient life. So let's go explore this area further. Now right here, I see what I'll call a bedrock area. And already I can see the outline of mortars. I'll tell you, this is really fantastic. You know, you don't have to be some kind of expert to figure out where you want your village at. You want it near water and at a high place near the water so you don't get flooded out in the winters. But look at this directly in front of us. This is beautiful, my goodness. I see one, two, there's probably another one here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mortars, and right over here is what I'll call the cupule or the anvil, and there's another one right over here. I tell you what, <laughs> it's always a joy to find these. My friends, before us are some massive oak trees. And I tell you, this is a good place to gather the acorn and process it if acorn is your food staple. My goodness, right before us, I see a circle. Now this circle was not placed here naturally. Look at this, my friends, right here. Oh, this is beautiful. This is incredible. Look at this, around this mortar, there is a circle of stone. Oh <laughs> my goodness, this is wonderful. I tell you. This is really always such a joy to find. Well, there you have it. This is where the ancients, under this old oak tree, gathered the acorn. It was a food staple and then processed it right over here. I'll tell you, this is really wonderful. Friends, I'm confident that under this strand of oak trees, we're gonna find additional mortars. It just feels so natural. Let me orient you right over here directly to the front of this tree is the stream. And again, this is a high ground. This is a fantastic place to have a small village site. You have a food source here, you have water, and then you have the stone that'll provide you a means to grind your food or prepare it. So anyways, let's continue our search over here. Let's see what else we can find. Oh my goodness, look at this directly in front of us. There's a mortar there. Right now I see one, two, three, four, five, okay, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, and there was at least eight others over there. So right now we have 18 to 20 mortars. 
Well, friends, let's examine this bedrock mortar area further. I see one, two, three, four, five, okay, six, and possibly seven mortars. And there could be others right over here. I tell you, these are very ancient. Look at this over here. Let's see if we can uncover one. Let's see how deep one of these is. Right over here, let's, let's try this. Okay, as you can see, this foliage here has gathered for many years. I would say well over a hundred years. My goodness, these could go very, very deep. So this is a very nice, beautiful one. Oh look, it has a stone in there. My goodness, could this be the remnants of a mortar? I don't know. So let's keep searching, okay? All right, it seems to end right over here. All right, here's one. Let's take a look at this one over here. Uh, okay. Oh, I feel, <laughs> my goodness, friends, look at this. Oh my goodness. Look, this is a pestle. This was used to grind the acorn. It was probably held this way. You could see it's broken. It's a broken pestle. And I say it's a pestle because it's very smooth. It's been worked. So it was linear, okay? And this is how the acorn was prepared. And this appears to be a right size for this, uh, I would say, mortar. Because look, it's not a very large mortar. So the pestle was about this long. And right over here is how the acorn was prepared. Here's how it was pounded. Here's how it was ground. My goodness, what a wonderful little find. Well, what I'm going to do is leave it here. I'm going to cover it up. <laughs> it's probably been here hundreds of years and it'll stay here from time immortal until maybe someone else comes along and finds it and hopefully they leave it here for you. I tell you, this is really great. Well, from this mortar here, we're gonna do an outward search. Let's see if we can find additional signs of life. I think I see some more bedrock over there. Let's go examine it. Let's see if we can find additional signs of ancient life. Yes, <laughs> it's coming into view. My goodness, this is wonderful. Look at this over here. These are large and deep, my goodness. This has, my goodness, look at this over here. Look at the size of these mortars over here. This is beautiful, my goodness. Look how big that one is. So right now I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my goodness, look at this over here. All right, okay, 11, 12, 13, and here's another one, 14. Friends, so far we've seen about 40 mortars. This is an area, a concentrated area of mortars on a high ground area near a stream. Again, as I said, there's no doubt in my mind that this is an ancient Maidu village site. friends I see this large boulder over here and we're near the stream and we see this large tree here in front of us it's an oak tree so let's take a look to see if we can find a mortar in this area I tell you what again the stream is right there ahead of us but there's a lot of growth here so far today we've found over 75 mortars I'll tell you, this is definitely a sign of life. Well, I'm surprised we don't see anything here. But uh, look at this over here. I'm wondering why there's all these dead branches over here. Let me take a look up here. Oh my goodness. I tell you, I said, oh, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this, friends. Look at this here, directly in front of us. Do you see it? There is a mortar and there's a grinding stone in it. This is very rare, my friends. This is very rare. Let's go take a closer look. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you, this is really exciting. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like a normal mortar because it has this, you know, it's, they're usually, but look at this. Okay, hold on. Look at this. My finger fits in there perfectly. Look at this. Look at this. Right here. This is how it was used, right here. This is a grinding mortar. <laughs> and this is the pestle used for this grinding mortar. I'll tell you, my friends, this is incredible. I know it's a mortar because not only do these stones fit the configuration to this 
mortar here. It fits the hand perfectly. And this is one of the fun things about these Stone Age tools. They are ergonomic. I tell you, it feels perfect. It feels right. Grinding occurred right here at this very spot. I tell you, we are fortunate. Well, anyway, so I'm going to cover this up and hopefully it'll be here hundreds of years from now. Friends, as I've mentioned before, the cycle of life around us continues. Look at this over here in front of us. Now, we've had some interesting finds today. One of our first was actually a beaver dam. This here are the remains of a beaver. This is a beaver skull here before us. Let me show you. Right here, these are the beaver teeth. These teeth are strong enough to cut through a tree. And so, my friends, let's continue our trek and seek further knowledge. Friends, let me share with you several aspects of why there was life here in this area. Right over here before us, you see this over here, which is the California live oak acorn. And this over here is a buckeye. And over here is the tail feather of a wild turkey. All these items are a food staple. They are today and were a thousand years ago. And this is one of the reasons why life existed here. You had water and you had food. Hey, uh... Friends, we're located at the historic electrical powerhouse in Folsom, California. But what many people don't realize that when electricity was generated here first in 1895, that the site was actually laid out on an ancient Maidu village location. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk our way down here to the river where the dam was that generated the power for the powerhouse and we're going to visit this ancient Indian site. Not much remains, but we will find evidence of past life. So let's take a journey down to the river and visit this site, which is hundreds if not thousands of years older than the powerhouse that's celebrated here today. Friends, what I find fascinating about this site is although the heritage or the celebration of Sacramento's electricity here at the Folsom Power Plant is celebrated from the year 1895, there's not one mention of the ancients that lived here. There was a Maidu village here along the shores of the American River. This village was here hundreds if not thousands of years ago, but yet there's not a word about their history or their lives here at this very location. Right over here is another grinding mortar. And look over here, this is what's called an anvil. And this is where the, I guess the acorn was first cracked open. And there is another mortar. Now that mortar looks somewhat broken. Let's take a look. Here is the first half. This section has been broken off. So this is really wonderful. We know that the ancients once lived here. We know that this is an ancient village site. Friends, walking around this site, look at all the Stone Age tools and implements that were located here within walking distance. I'll tell you, this is really amazing. These items are hundreds if not thousands of years old, and every one of them had a utility. This over here is a grinding platform. This here is as smooth as silk, and this is the grinding stone that goes with it. 
I found these about 10 feet apart. And here's another grinding stone right here, okay? Used in a similar manner, but on a bigger metate, so to speak, in this manner. And over here, this is a pestle. And it was used in the mortars in a pounding action, such as this here. Really fantastic. These over here, these round ones, are called hammer stones. And the interesting thing about each one of them is it has a notch right over here. You see, each one of them has this type of notch so that you can hold it in your hand and do your hammering. This one actually has two notches. There's a notch right here, and then there's a notch right here. So this is what's called a hammer stone used for hammering. Now these over here could be what's called the hot rocks. In other words, they were heated in a fire and then thrown into a wicker basket that contained gruel or soup to heat it up. All these are implements used for cooking. Now this here is a fantastic spherical plate. I'm not exactly sure what its utility is, but look at this, perfectly round and very smooth over here. I am sure this is some type of cooking implement, although I can't tell you exactly how it was used. But time will tell because knowledge is, is there for us. This here is a precursor to go and seek further knowledge. So I'm going to do some research and find out what this is. Friends, I want to mention that our journeys are about knowledge. They're not about hunting for artifacts. So all these items here that were located along the site are going to be buried here and left for others to enjoy in the years to come. Well, friends, I've had a wonderful day trekking here in the Rockland area and visiting the traditional homeland of the Nissan people. Now, one of the things that I want to mention is that at the time of the arrival of the European settlers to this region, there were approximately 9,000 Maidu alive. However, by the census in 1901, only 300 were recorded. And unfortunately, most had died through diseases introduced here to this area for which the Maidu had no immunity. And also many died from the simple displacement of their traditional homelands. Well, I'm happy to report that today there are approximately three to four thousand Maidu living and prospering in this region. Anyways, I hope that you continue to trek with me as we visit ancient sites that time has long forgotten. Hey, hey.